with Luke's Gospel, chapter 8, and the verse 26. A portion of Scripture that I preached from before, but never from this Gospel, because it's mentioned in three Gospels altogether. And it's, the, it's Luke 8, and the context is the Lord Jesus and the disciples have just uh, come over the Sea of Galilee. And the storm erupted, and he settled the storm. And at the 26th verse, we read that uh, these words. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. I just want to stop there for a wee moment because that verse gives me a bit of trouble sometimes because it's referring to the Gadarenes, which was one of the twelve tribes of, of Israel that Jacob blessed. Remember that uh, each one of the tribes had a portion of land. And this was the tribe of Gad. And the name for Gad is troop or army. And in the blessing of Jacob it said that they would be overcome. Now it seems to me from this portion of Scripture that they are overcome because when you read on down it you will discover that they were in the pork business because they have 2,000 swine on their grounds. So they must have been dealing with pork, which was an offense to the Jews, which was against the law of the Jews. Gad had a long strip of land that went from the, from the Dead Sea right down to Galilee. And down along that strip, these men were farming the swine. You see, it says about the tribe of Gab, Gad that they were warriors, uh, that they were, some of them were David's mighty men. They were men of fight and battle. But they're not in battle now, they're in business. And so many of God's people, you know, they come out of the battle. These boys are not in the battle now. They're, 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 they're in business. What happened to them? Something happened to them along the way. Well, pork was no offense to the Jews. But they're dealing in it. And they're working in it. And they've slipped far away. My dear friend, keep your eye on the Lord now and don't be getting away from Him. Because we can get away from Him with materialism and money and houses, and all these things, and we see where it has led us. And so this, these gatherings uh, have strayed. Anyway, that's not our business tonight. Verse 27, When he went forth to the land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had dev devils or demons a long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. Now you watch these words very carefully. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many demons were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there an herd of many swine feeding on the mountains. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them, and he suffered, and he suffered them. And when the devils out of them, when the devils out of the man, and entered into the swine, 
Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. When they had fed them, when they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. They also which saw it told them by what means he was possessed of the devils, he that was possessed of the devils was healed. Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear. And he went up into the ship and returned back again. Now the man out of whom the demons or devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And we know that God will bless the public reading of his own precious word. Any man or woman on the planet Earth tonight who does not believe in a literal living being called the devil, they're living in complete and utter denial and ignorance and also with little or no knowledge of the Word of God. Because from Genesis to Revelation, we have the footprints and the fingerprints and the blueprints and the bloodprints of Satan. Satan, the old serpent, the dragon, the our adversary, the accuser of the brethren, and many more names are given to him. His name scattered through these sacred pages. And if we don't care to examine the book and find out about the devil, we only have to look around in society this evening. We only have to look at the things that are going on in the world in these last days. We only have to glimpse at what happened in the House of Commons last Tuesday evening when they, when they voted that obnoxious vote on, on, on marriage of same-sex couples. We only have to look at the young people with the drugs and, and the drink and the state of society and the world around us. We only have to listen to the news as we were hearing it in the past week where, where, where men have been exploiting even the very food that we eat with false labels on them and false meat in the inside of it. All part of the, of the strategy of the devil because it comes from the greed of men. The Bible says that he is the God of this world. He is the prince of the power of the air. That the whole world lieth in the lap of the wicked one. He is the prince of darkness. And he likes to keep himself behind the scenes. He doesn't expose himself at all hardly. Because of that we are blinded and we are deceived by his work and by his power because we blame him when we shouldn't blame him and we don't blame him when we should blame him. Now I want to say something tonight that maybe some of my people have heard me say at least once before, that the devil is not omnipresent. He cannot be in more than one place at the one time. When God challenged them at the gates of Job and around the hedges of Job, when he was trying to get in after Job, and he said to him, Whence comest God? said, Whence comest thou, Satan? And he said, From walking up and down throughout all the earth. He was telling a lie. He's a liar. He was doing nothing of the sort because he only can be himself in one place at the one time. And if he told God of heaven a blatant lie, he'll tell you a lie, and he's telling you lies, and you don't know that they're lies from the devil. So we're going to unmask him tonight if we can. There's been a prayer meeting going on in this place today from 4 o'clock right through to 7 o'clock, because we know what we are dealing with this evening. 
He is not omnipresent, and He is not omniscient. He doesn't know all things. He would like to think, let you think that He knows all things, but He doesn't know all things. He knows some things, but He's limited in knowledge. But I'll tell you one thing He knows. He knows that the time is short. He knows that the coming of the Lord draweth near. Now, he doesn't know when he's coming, but he knows that it's drawn near. He knows that the time is short, and that is why he is so busy. Because there's coming a day when he's going to be chained. One angel with one chain is going to tie him. One angel, the mighty Satan, is going to, t- is going to tie him and chain him, and he's going to go into the bottomless pit. And God will come shortly and bruise him under his feet. He is not omnipresent. He is not omniscient. And he is not omnipotent. He is not all-powerful. He has has mighty power. He has power, but he hasn't almighty power. He has mighty power, but he hasn't almighty power. These three attributes that I'm after speaking belongs to the Godhead alone. Omnipresent, omniscient, and the omnipotent only belongs to God. Now, having said all that, he has a host and hordes of demons. And where you read in the King James Version with devils, and we read it a number of occasions there, it's not that there's more than one devil, it's demons. And we are experiencing in these last days an unprecedented unleashing of demonic powers in society. And Paul, when he was writing to Timothy, says, give heed in the last days to the doctrines of demons. And we need to give heed. When the Word of God tells us to give heed to something, we need to give heed to it. The Harry Potter phenomena, the New Age movement, liberalism, humanism, modernism in the past years are only some of the things that have propelled this whole stuff up into another level. And we're living in very dark and dangerous and evil and wicked days. I don't have to tell you that tonight. But if we could get it over to God's people, maybe they'd pray more for their children. Maybe they'd pray more for their family. Maybe they'd pray more for the church. The Ouija bird is now replaced with a bird they call a bird they call the angel bird board, where young people in particular, and it's happening around us this night as I'm speaking, where young people in particular communicate with unseen forces. They speak and they communicate with witches and with mediums, and they're seeking jobs and they're seeking relationships, and I'll tell you what's more, they're getting answers. They're getting answers because demons speak. You only have to read the paper now, <laughs> not so long ago, and you'll see where demons spoke, where boy said, a voice came into my head. Well, a voice of God doesn't come into a man's head to do evil. And they're gathered round this, 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 in, this, this, angel board, as it's now called, and they're taken up with it. Always remember that the devil and his battalions and the hordes and battalions and emissaries of darkness are fierce and they're mighty and they're numerous. Do you know that there's a demon for suicide? Do you know that there's a demon for sodomy? There's demons allocated to certain things. Demons of fear. Demons of lust. They're like an army man. They're they're, 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 they're regimental. 
They're powerful in their work. But the main theme, the main issue of the devil and his demons are always to destroy souls. Always to damn souls. That's the bottom line. Damn your soul, no matter what way they can damn it. I was just reading the other day where a 15-year-old boy in a geography class jumped up before the teacher and the pupils and started to shout, Get this demon off my shoulder. And he ran out hysterical screaming. He was tinkering with this stuff. I was reading where a child went into a, was in a park and a child, I don't know what age, six or seven, went into a toilet and when they were coming out of the toilet, this, this black figure blocked the child and scared the life and the child couldn't get out. And if you're twit, tinkering about with this stuff here tonight and listening to me or watching me tonight, I tell you, you're on very dangerous ground. We have trouble enough. You'll have trouble enough with the devil without that. And if there's anybody here tonight or listening to me and you're dabbling in this sort of stuff, let me tell you that you're bringing a curse upon yourself and you're bringing a curse upon your children and you're bringing a curse upon your family. And when it gets a grip on you, this like a whole lot of other things, you'll not be able to shake it off. There's witches' covens spread throughout Ireland. You know that, Northern Ireland. You know that. Maybe you don't. I read recently also, just about a, a week or ten days ago, I read where a, where a, where a, where a Christian was on a flight, a transatlantic fl flight, and he was sitting beside this man, and he had his head, he had his head bowed, and all the whole four or five hours flight it was, he never looked up, and he never spoke to him, but he was praying because he could hear him. And the, the, the Christian thought that he was a believer, and whenever the flight was over, he put out his hand to shake hands with him. He says, you know, uh, i seen you were praying there all the way over. He says, I'm a believer too. He says, I'm a Satanist, and I'm praying for you, boys. He says, I'm praying that the Lord will destroy your churches and I'm praying that he will break up your marriages. He says, that's what I was praying. So they're praying on the plains. This is real tonight. This is truth tonight. Now when we're dealing with a subject like this, as we dealt with sodomy last week, we need to deal with it from the Word. Because we can't challenge the devil, we can't challenge the enemy, we have no authority, we have no ground to challenge him, only through the Word. That's how the Lord Jesus challenged him on the Mount of Temptation when he came to the wilderness to tempt him and to lie to him. Every time he said to Satan, Satan, it is written. So we're coming to you tonight with this Word of God that is written, and I'm taking this passage of Scripture because... There's 42 verses given in Matthew, Mark, and Luke to the demonic of Gadara. 48 verses. 42 verses. So when the Scripture gives 42 verses, and the, or the Gospels give 42 verses on an incident of demonic possession... We need to take heed to it. That's the exception rather to the rule. Apart from the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ in the gospel, there's nothing mentioned as much. So this is here for our learning. So we have got to look at this man tonight in this passage. And I will say things about him tonight that you'll not find in Luke, but you'll find it in Matthew and you'll find it in Mark. If it's not in Luke, it'll be in Matthew and Mark. And this fellow is set up here as an example to us tonight to preach from it and to expound from it and to show you what this man was and what type of man he was and what happened to him and how the Lord dealt with him and what was in him and what God did with what was in him. Because if you say to me tonight, there's no such thing as demon possession, again, you're ignorant. 
and we're not facing facts, and we're not facing reality. Because we don't want to face these things. But we must face them. Because they're all around us. Now, I want to be very simple regarding this man tonight. And, and the first thing I want to say this, this man had an unclean spirit because in Mark 5, that's what it tells us, this fellow, he had an unclean spirit. That was the first thing. Now, when Paul says, take heed, we need to take heed to this statement. Because if we ever lived in the day of uncleanness, we live in it now. If we ever, ever lived in the day that things are vile and vulgar and dirty in society, we live in it today. Children's very mindsets are thwarted and twisted. From the TV to the DVDs to the internet, to the mobile phones, 10 and 12 year olds are flicking obscene images. Images that was in the paper not so long ago in Cookstown, children flicking images of bestiality. The minds are unclean. We're living in an unclean age. My friend, you can't, what, tell me, what paper, what national paper would you buy today? And is facing us all the time. And we're paying for it. We're paying for it with rape. We're paying for it with child abuse. We're paying for it with adultery. And we're paying, paying, uh, paying for it with fornication. And I want to be very serious tonight and very solemn and very straight tonight because this has laid, been laid upon my heart. There's someone in this meeting tonight and you're fiddling about with pornography. And there's people listening to me and you're at the pornography. And you can make all the excuses you like about it and you can deny it if you like. But I will tell you something about that dirty thing. That is a great weapon of the devil today with young people and older people. And you get those images into your mind, you're not, they're not easy got out of your mind. You'll get other things, you'll see other things, you'll have other images, you'll see, they'll go out of your mind very quick, but they won't. And if you're a Christian tonight and you're thinking with that sort of stuff, how can you pray? How can you read? How can you witness to anybody? How can you enjoy the presence of the Lord? You can't. And let that sink in now tonight. You have an unclean mind. And you need to get rid of all those old things, whatever they are, and you need to get down before the Lord, and you need to stay before the Lord until you get cleansed. Because the longer that goes on, the harder it will be. The Bible says, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. The Bible says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. The Bible says, Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. Christ died to give us victory. He died to give us power. And he died to deliver us, my friend. He can deliver us from that. He can deliver you from anything. He's the great deliverer tonight. So this fellow was unclean, because that's what it says in Mark. He had an unclean spirit. 
But the second thing about this fellow was this, he, he was unsociable. He was a loner. Well, Jesus says in this account that we read that he had his own house. Verse 39 says in verse 39, return to thine own house. So he had a house. Of course, the prodigal had a house too, hadn't he? And a good house and a good father. But he didn't want to stay in the house. And this fellow didn't stay in the house. I had a good wee house too, you know. Down on the shore of Loch Ern. Looking out onto five islands on the lower loch. Out of my bedroom window. I had a good mother. And I had a good father too. But I didn't want to stay at home. So I took myself off to Manchester. And 13 months I lived in Manchester. I'll tell you, I was glad to get back home. Fields are green far away, young, young man. And the things that I got involved in in 13 months over there is none of your business. But I can tell you this, that the way of the transgressor is hard. Maybe you're here tonight or you're listening to me or watching me tonight somewhere and you want to get away out from under your care of your mother and your father and you're going to get a flat. <laughs> you're going to get a wee house of your own. And you be very careful. And you be very careful the motives that's taken you away. Oh, I want to do my own thing. I want to go my own way. Well, you'll get your fill of it. This fellow had a home and he had to go back to it. Because the Lord sent him back to it. He, 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 he was a loner. A loner. And when the devil gets you alone, he got me into a wee, into a wee flat in, in, in Manchester. Remember, I was brought up, I, I spent my life on the shores of Loch Ern, in, in, in fields, acres and acres of fields, and the crows and the birds, and the cattle and the cows. And he got me into a wee, a wee flat in, 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 in Manchester City. And it wasn't very long until the only clothes I had was the clothes on my back. It wasn't very long until the only shoes I had were leaking water. And I didn't want to see anybody. And I didn't want to talk to anybody. Because the devil was isolating me to destroy me. That's what he was doing. Stay in the company. Stay with your friends. Stay with your people. Seek help. Don't be going away on your own. There's no problem that you have, dear, tonight too big that we can't handle. Oh, I wish, I, I remember walking up the streets of Manchester and, and nowhere to stay. And I was thinking of the farm of land and I was thinking of all the past and everything that I should have had and everything that I didn't have. And oh, what an awful pity party. But I often thought of it and knew those words of the psalm. Psalmist, does no man care for my soul? It didn't seem as if anybody cared. But listen, we care for you here. And if you want to stay behind afterwards or come and see me any time, night or day, you're welcome to come if I can help you at all.
This, 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 this fellow was, un, he, he was unsociable. And when the devil got him on his own, out into the mountains, out into the wilderness, out amongst the tombs, when he got him on his own, he took him another stage. You see, when the devil gets you on your own, he can talk to you better. You know what he's saying to some of the, some, some of the young people today? You're too fat. And then he's saying to the other ones, you're too thin. <laughs> and you're too ugly. And you're no good. Ask the demons. Ask the language of hell, let me tell you. The Lord wouldn't speak to you like that. The Lord loves you tonight, the way you are. And you just be content with the way you are too. Because you're unique. You have a gift that nobody else has. You're too fat. You're too thin. You're too ugly. You have no job. Everybody said to me over in Manchester, you have no job. You have no money. You have no friends. You have no home. And then he'd say, get a, get a couple of tattoos on you there and, and, and let them see that you're a great fellow there. Get a ring in your nose and a ring in your ear and a ring in your lip. Get all painted up and get your hair done and everything else and you'll be a great one. But it'll only last for a wee while. That's the devil. You yourself and be yourself. He was working at this by step by step. He was unclean, he was unsociable, he was ungovernable. It says in Matthew's Gospel, no man could pass him by. He was exceedingly fierce. Ho, ho. Boys, I was watching some boy the other night on the news, and boys, I wouldn't like to meet Don Boy. I wouldn't like to meet him in daylight, never mind darkness. Did you ever see such evil looking men that are appearing now? Tattoos all over them. <laughs> you think I'm bald? <laughs> fierce looking. There's some fierce people out there. Boys, there's people out there tonight and they just snuff you out like that and go home and sleep. That's what they're doing. This is the society that we're living. He was exceedingly fierce. They couldn't tame him. They couldn't chain him. They couldn't rein him. The family couldn't do it. The authorities couldn't do it. He was cutting himself. Listen, he was cutting himself day and night with stones and crying. If only we could get close to this poor man. Imagine, imagine and he was naked. Imagine him running naked through the tombs, crying and shrieking and shouting and cutting himself with stones all over the place. He must have had all his body cut with an old sharp stone. If he had a knife, he'd have done it with a knife. He'd have had a rope, he'd have hung himself. Nobody could do anything with him. Talk about self-harm. One in five teenagers in Northern Ireland cry for help and for attention and self-harm themselves. And they never think of their godly mothers and godly fathers or their mothers or their fathers. You never think, young person, the grief that you're bringing to them, do you? Yeah. 
You ever think of the nights that they lie awake thinking where you are and what you're doing? I was conducting a mission not that long ago and I was shaking hands with the people going out and one of the deacons came up behind me. He says, there's a fellow who wants to see you. So when I got the people out, I went down to see this fellow, young, lovely young fellow. Well, he was cut from here to here. Oh, he says, look. Drugs and drink. He wasn't at the meeting. His mother and father was at the meeting, and his mother and father were at the prayer meetings and been in the prayer meeting for years praying for him. He says, I wasn't at the meeting tonight, but he says, I'm, 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 I'm bad. And says, I, you look bad. God help what a lovely young fellow he was. So the Lord wouldn't do that with a young fellow like that. Ask the devil and the demons of hell. And when I was talking to him, his mother came in. And she sat down and she just started to cry. And he started to cry. He says, oh, my mother's heart broke. But I couldn't do anything for him. Not a thing. And I can't do anything for you tonight. Only what I've done with him. Try and help him. That's all. I can't save you tonight. But you're going to see in a minute there's one who can and one who can deliver you. Whatever the bondage is. Because we're not dealing, we're not taking lectures from the devil. It's time that we rose up and took our authority and victory that we have in Jesus Christ. Submit yourself unto the Lord and resist the devil and he will flee from you. The Bible says, submit yourself unto the Lord. That you have to do first. And then resist them. Resist the devil. Resist the demons. And I'll tell you, you'll not be long, if you mean business with God tonight, you'll not be long resisting them till he'll flee. As you'll see, as we come to a close. He was unclean, he was unapproachable, he was unsociable, he was ungovernable. But he wasn't unreachable. Whenever Jesus stepped off the boat and came towards him, he fell at his feet. And the eight words, Jesus set him free. Come out of the man, thy unclean spirit. The problem wasn't with the man. It was in the man. The Lord Jesus didn't speak to him. Oh, can I get this over tonight? He didn't speak to the poor man. He spoke, spoke to that which was in the man. And listen, we can, let, we, can get, we can let demons into us, you know, fooling about with widgery boards and things away back years ago. We can get an evil spirit within us. And it can rear its head now and again and now and again down through the years to keep you from praying, to keep you from praising, to keep you from victory, from, to keep you from rejoicing. And Jesus addressed, he addressed the demon, the demons that were in him. There was more demons in him than 2,000 swine couldn't hold. I love that we hymn, when Jesus comes, 
the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, the night is turned to day. He takes the gloom and fills the soul with glory. For all is changed when Jesus comes to stay. He says, come out of the man, thy unclean spirit. He got to the very point of the fact of what the problem was. He got to the devil, the demon himself. We're working at the outside. That's what we're doing. We're covering up. This is the Lord's work. This is the Lord's business. And I tell you again tonight, if you're serious, if you're desperate, if you want freedom, if you want liberty, if you want Christ, if you want joy, you're going to have to be man or woman enough to come and let people pray with you and let people pray over you and mean business with God. If ever there was a man who could, if ever there was a man who could have quoted this passage in Micah, in the prophecy of Micah, it was him. He had compassion on me and subdued my iniquities and cast all my sins into the depths of the sea. Man, I tell you this, that those demons came out of that man and they went into 2,000 swine and they ran down on narrow part and down over the cliffs and into the Sea of Galilee. And listen, isn't the pig the only animal that can't swim? There was no coming back, my friend. Jesus knows how to deal with these things. You don't and I don't. He knows how to deal with them. He knows how to set men free. He died to set us free. He, he shed his blood to set us free. He destroyed death and Satan and hell at the place called Calvary. And then what do we read? The next thing we read, that he's sitting at the Saviour's feet, clothed and in his right mind. I call that serenity. Sitting. It's a long time since that fella sat. Now just take your time now. It's a long time for me sat at peace. Are you at peace tonight? Are you sleeping well, by the way? As if you're a child of God tonight, you should be sleeping well. He giveth his beloved sleep. Or is the devil hammering fears into your mind, is it? Well, if you're in this meeting tonight and you're possessed with fear, that comes from the devil himself. Because God said, I haven't given you a spirit of fear. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. This fella is in a sound mind. Because his mind was hit. It's the mind, it's the mind that the demons go for. It's the mind that gives us the problems, isn't it? Well, he's in serenity. There's no peace, says Jehovah, to the wicked. Justified by faith, we have peace with God. He's sitting in peace. Serenity. The second thing is modesty. He's clothed. The devil's business has taken clothes off. It's the Lord's business to put them on. I never had a pair of shoes that leaked water since. Never. And I never will have. I never had a suit 
and the only suit I had with holes in it since. And I never will have. Where did the clothes come from away out in the mountains of Gadara? Maybe you don't ask those questions when you read the Bible, but I do. Here's this man, he was naked, running mad and screeching for how long and roaring and in amongst the dead. Nobody would go near him, sure they couldn't get anywhere near him, they couldn't tame him, chain him. The man's mad, he's a madman. They couldn't deal with him in society, so they cast him out. They can't deal with it, they throw it away. They can't, do, can't, can't deal with it, they put you in prison, they can't deal with it. And now he's sitting, and he's clothed, and in his right mind. Well, I'll tell you, these old pig farmers from Gadara didn't give them the clothes anyway. I would nearly be sure of that. For if you read right, you'll, you'll read where they where, where the prayed that he might leave. Ah, he upset their business, you see. Prayed that he might go. Well, I, my, I'm as well, uh, every right to speculate as anybody else. I think the Lord Jesus brought them with him. Well, he knew where he was going because he knew all things. He knew who he was going to meet because he knows the heart of man. And of course he knew the man, he knew the size of the man too, didn't he? And I'd say that the clothes fit him. And here's I, lovely Lord Jesus, and he's crossing the Galilee. And he has this man in his mind and he's going to set him free. Maybe that's what he's going to do tonight in this meeting or somebody listening to me across the broad acres of earth tonight. He wants to set you free, son. He wants to break that old drug habit, that old drink habit, that old lust habit. He wants to smash it. He wants to break it. He has come tonight for you. Now I can see my lovely Lord Jesus as he put his head down in the pillar in the ship and the things tossed in the storm and they thought everything was going to go. Lord, carest thou not that we perish? And with one word he calmed the storm. Peace be still. And as that old boat rocked across the Galilee, And there was a bag of clothing there for the boy somewhere. And he's sitting clothed and in his right mind. Serenity, modesty, sanity, mind healed. Reality. Oh, how real this was. Some of you know nothing about this, you know. Some of you Christians, you know nothing about this. And the reason that you don't know anything about it is because you never had a lifestyle like this or like this. And thank God. He's sitting clothed and in his right mind at his feet. What does he want to do? He prayed that he would be able to stay with him. He wanted to stay with him. He didn't want to leave him. Oh my, that's the, that night that I got a wee touch that Monday morning that I got a wee touch of him 42 years ago. Boys, I was afraid. I was afraid I might lose him. I didn't want to go back to the old ways and the old world. No, I didn't want to go back to them. So the beggarly elements of the world. No. 
that brought me down nigh to hell almost. I have marks on my body yet as a result of it. But the Lord said to him, and here's my finishing punch tonight, the Lord said to him, he says, go home. And I'm saying to some man tonight and some woman tonight listening to me, I'm saying to you tonight, young man, young woman, go home. Go home to your mother. Go home to your father. Go home to your wife. Go home to your child. It's an enemy has done this. Go home. Go home like the prodigal. Go home from the swine trucks. Go home from the harlots. Go home to your children. He says to him, go home. And tell them at home the great things that the Lord has done for you. Tell me, has he changed, Danny? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Go home and tell them the great thing. Ah, do you remember? Oh, and I'm finished with it. Do you remember in Luke 16, the rich man in hell lifted up his eyes, being in torments? And Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom in heaven. Do you remember the word came back from heaven to the rich man? Son, in thy lifetime thou had good things and Lazarus evil things. What's the word coming from heaven to the rich man? He had good things. The house is a good thing. The car's a good thing. The money's a good thing. The job's a good thing. The fortune in the bank's a good thing. But he says, go home and tell the great things. I tell you, this is great salvation. How shall we escape if we, if we neglect so great salvation? So clothed and in his right mind and delivered and saved and set free, he goes home. Can you imagine when he goes home, if he had a wife, if he had the children? Can you imagine some of the children looking out to the window and running into the mommy? Mommy, here's daddy. He's mad. He's going to kill us. No, no, look. There's something different about him. No, no, he's dressed and he's changed. He's a new daddy. He's a new husband. And do you know where he went? He went to evangelize. And do you know where he evangelized? Ten, the ten cities of Decapolis. I tell you, he wasted no time. Ten cities. He went out as a flaming evangelist for the Lord. Boys, here's something mighty for you tonight. If you'll come for deliverance, if you'll come for help, if you'll come to the foot of the old rugged cross, if you'll come to Calvary, come to the one who was stripped naked for your sins. Come to the one who was crowned with the thorns and whose visage was marred, and who hung on that old cross. Flee to him tonight. But it was there, and there alone, that he destroyed the powers of death, and hell, and demons, and devils. Hallelujah! And he rose again on the third day, and he lives in the power of an endless life, and he has the devil on a leash.
And he only can go so far. And his hordes of demons might be busy, and they might be infiltrating minds and, and areas and governments and people in the air, and the demons of suicide and the demons of lust and the demons of sodomy, and all those demons are busy in these days. But the Lord's in control. The Lord's bigger than Cameron, and he's bigger than Clegg, and he's bigger than the vote in the House of Commons. This God is a great God. He's a mighty God. He's a big God. And He's my God. And He's my Savior. And I'm serving Him for 42 years. Hallelujah. And he that the Son sets free is free indeed. What are you going to do tonight? Hmm? Are you going to go home a new person? Are you going to go home a changed person? Are you going to go home a delivered person? Whatever way you want to go home, you call the shots. It's entirely up to you. If you want to go on the way you're going, do what you're doing, keep on the way you're going, you just do it. The Lord's not going to put an arm up around your back or stand in the door to keep you back because he's given you free will. This God is our God, and He's able to deliver. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight again for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the attention. And, O oh God, we praise you for the mighty delivering power of the blood of Jesus. We thank you tonight, Lord, that many can testify in this meeting to being set free. Thank you, Lord, tonight that we can enjoy our salvation. Thank you tonight that we can enjoy fellowship with the Lord day by day. Thank you that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We thank you that when we come down before thee, Lord, in, our, in sin, we bless thee that you cleanse us and you forgive us, and you set us free. And Lord, I want to praise you tonight for all that you've done in my life. I want to thank you tonight, Lord, for ever saving me and keeping me and blessing me. I want to praise you tonight for putting clothes on my back and shoes on my feet. I want to thank you that you're a great God tonight. I want to praise you that you're the same yesterday and today and forevermore. I want to thank you tonight that there's nothing impossible with our God. Father, forgive us for allowing the enemy, the devil, to annoy us, to distract us, to strike fear into us. We bind them in the name of Jesus tonight. We resist them in the name of Jesus. We resist you, Satan, tonight in the name of Jesus and through the blood of Christ. You're a defeated foe. You're a liar. You're the father of lies. And you're a murderer from the beginning. And you have no right to any young person in this meeting or older person in this meeting. You have no right to have authority in our homes. You have no right to have authority in our land. And we bind you and resist you in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, that you will send a mighty Holy Ghost revival down upon us and sweep, Lord, out all the filth and all the uncleanness and all the lies and everything that's in our homes and in our houses that shouldn't be and that we get a baptism of the Holy Ghost across our land. Lord, we thank you that we believe that you're able to do this. And we praise you. We have, no, we have every confidence in God. We thank you that you've done it before and you can do it again. And we praise you, Lord, that you will pour out your Spirit upon us. Lord, bless every dear soul in here tonight. Lord, there's some here tonight on the trouble. There's some here tonight and they don't know how they're going to face tomorrow. There's some here this evening that have no work and have very little money and the families. And Father, we just bring them to Thee. There's others here who have lost loved ones. Others here, Lord, who have their own problems and battles. But, oh God, we thank Thee that Thou art sufficient for every need. And so we praise You tonight and we thank You tonight. And we pray, Lord, that You'll part us in Thy fear and let us part in the note of victory, for faith is the victory. Hallelujah tonight that we can go home to our beds, comfortable beds, and we can sleep. And we praise you, Father, that some of these days you're going to come to take us out and home to be with thyself. And, oh, God, we thank you tonight, and we praise you. Pray for our children tonight. Pray for our families tonight. 
Pray for those that are under attack this evening. Pray for those who are not saved and in some hellhole across the land somewhere tonight, watching something, Lord, some old filth or whatever it might be. Lord, have mercy, we pray. Come down, Lord, we pray, and save our families that when the roll is called up yonder, that they'll all be there. Lord, bless us, we pray now, and accept our thanks. We thank you for your lovely presence and your help. And we praise you tonight, Lord. We just love you tonight. Thank you for helping us tonight. Lord, as we went into the enemy territory, he doesn't like it and he'll not like it. And Father, we pray that you'll cover us in the blood tonight. Cover our home in the blood. Cover our families in the blood. Surround us, Lord, tonight. Even, even uh, Miss Salta was preaching, even those that were listening, even to those that have nodded assent in this meeting. We know that we have an enemy and he hates us tonight. But we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. And so, loving Father, we leave here tonight with a note of victory, praising the Lord, praising the Lord Jesus for Calvary and for the blood and for the resurrection power and that he ever liveth to make intercession for us and he's coming someday soon to take us on to himself. Hallelujah. We give you thanks, asking these things in our Saviour's name and for his sake. Amen. <laughs>